Web Summit 2014 for youtube.com forward slash media tech social. I'm here with Paul. Tell us the name of your company, Paul, and what you do because I think it's really interesting. Touchcast. And what does Touchcast do? Because I've just had the demo and I want to show everybody out there on our YouTube channel, but Jesus, there's a lot of stuff packed into this. So Touchcast does two things fundamentally. One, we treat the iPad as a broadcast TV studio. So we all, we're all familiar with those big TV trucks. There are several of them outside today here at the Web Summit. Our view is that you can put all of that, all of that kit into an iPad. And behind us is a 50 quid uh, green screen from Amazon. And with that, and with the iPad, and with a tripod, we say you've got a broadcast TV studio. And then the second part of Touchcast, and this is, this is the part that really, really, really excites me, is that we've fused the web with video. So all of our video is interactive, and the web lives inside the video. So we treat video as the canvas for the web. It's like a container for the web. So it looks like TV, but feels like the web. Please show us the interface. I've had a look at the interface myself. I'm already impressed by it, but I want to show the people out there in, uh, in YouTube land. Okay, so this is just a typical example of the green screen. So this was shot on an iPad, um, just using a green screen, just like this. We've created some sort of virtual worlds, and this girl is just sat in it. You can even see, look, a shadow on the desk in front of her. She's literally standing in front of a green screen, but it looks like a multi-million dollar um, broadcast TV studio. So how do we do that? We create a new touch cast, and there are two different ways to create a touch cast. You either use the camera on the iPad and, tri and use the iPad as your camera, or if you're shooting something you know, high end with you know, amazing production values and you want to import the video in and then lay all the web over the top, then you use our video import feature. So let me just show you how to... Um, I love this because we've got our cameraman in there as well and our mic as you can see. Okay. So, We've got sort of five core functions at the bottom of the screen here. So we've got our camera, and of course, everybody in TV studio needs an auto cue. So there's our auto cue. You can change the speed of it, and obviously, the viewer doesn't see the auto cue. Obviously, you wouldn't expect them to. Um, we've also got the ability to use the other camera. So if somebody was there, there you go. There's your hand. Very attractive it is, too. Um, and then the coolest feature of all, and unfortunately, we uh, actually, I can flip the camera around, so let's do this. So let's swap the camera around, point it at the green screen. Now let's turn the green screen on. Let's pull in a green screen background, um, like this. So let's just pull in one of our uh, standard backgrounds. I've got sticky fingers today. There we go. So now, if we start recording, your hand is against our green screen. I've got to say, this is incredible. I mean. If you look at the sheer amount of technology that's required to make this happen, and it's all packed inside an iPad, and I'm not, this is not some journalistic bias thing, this is as a video blogger, how incredible I think this is. So tell us more about some of these other add, features down we here. Can add, we can add a soundtrack, we can add sound effects. A lapel mic. And we can also, yeah, I would normally plug a lav mic in here, which would just give me broadcast quality sound. Because obviously you've got broadcast quality HD video driven from the iPad Air, but the sound quality isn't very good unless you actually disable the iPad microphone. I've also got the ability to use telestration, which is basically whiteboarding or drawing on the screen. So I'm able to actually annotate the screen in real time uh, as well. But where it gets really, really exciting is with what we call VAPs or video apps. So this is where, and let's turn the camera back on ourselves, should we? Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're back in the Web Summit now. Let me turn the green screen off. So when I want to add the web, I use my VAPs. So I can go and pull in a web page. So let's take the Web Summit. And uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi at the Web Summit today is running rather slow, to say the least. 20,000 people here all need internet access, and we're all having to sort of uh, go back to dial-up days. So there's, there's my web page. I then create my VAP, and I've now got a live web page inside the video. It's baked in. This is not like YouTube annotations, where you click on a link in a YouTube video, and the web content opens up in another tab. This, when we play it back, will open up inside the video. So I could also add, what else would you like me to add? Should we add a Google map and show where we are? Fine. I find the uh, the poll feature was super interesting. The poll. Okay, we'll add the, we'll add a poll. So we've got our poll here. So let's ask a question. What question do you want to ask? Um, Sorry. Just, if we just put this. Hello. Yeah, hello. Okay. Hello. Answer A, B, or C. And then I add that to the video. 
And I've now got a live interactive poll inside as well. And I just gone and voted for B, but there we go. Um, I could pull in some live news. So let's pull in a, a ticker and then we'll hit record and show your viewers how it all works. So let's select, uh, let's go for the BBC's feed. So I've now got, when it loads, live news headlines in there. So let's start recording. Um, so here we are at uh, the Web Summit. <clears throat> you can see we've got uh, a, a Web Summit page there, and we've got a poll, and we've got some news uh, running along the bottom. When I finish recording, I hit Done. I've got instant playback. There's your hand again. OK, let's zip through that. And let's get to where we introduce the web content. So now I can go and interact with that web page inside the video. And look, the video is still there. And I can pause it, or I could auto-pause it if I wanted to as the creator. And when I'm done, I'm back inside the video. I can now go and vote for number A. I've got such sticky fingers today. There we go. And there you go. I've just voted for B again. OK? And then I can go and click on one of these headlines, and it takes me to that live news content. Literally, anything from the web, anything, social, PDFs, video, anything can live inside a video. And that's the magic of TouchCast. I know you're short on time, but this actually, for me, is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Um, the focus, as you said, is business. There must be a consumer roadmap for this in, at some point in the long or medium term. Well, we launched as an iPad app in June 2013, and Apple had seen it in advance, loved it, made us an editor's choice, and then we became a featured app. So we quickly grew the app organically, but it was among teachers and students in the US. So TouchCast is being used extensively across America and now quite a lot in the UK as well as a tool for what's called flip learning, where um, you know, video is used increasingly by teachers to set homework assignments and students are creating homework assignments using TouchCast. So we've already seen a huge consumer growth in the app. Particularly from education. Um, particularly from education. Um, vloggers have started using it. We've seen some great content from vloggers. Um, but if I'm honest, our focus is on the business side, and it's licensing the technology to the likes of the BBC. Um, we have a big deal with Unilever, who are using it only for internal consumption. So they're using TouchCast for video presentations, um, and the SVP at uh, Unilever, who brought TouchCast to Unilever, calls it the death of PowerPoint, and tries to encourage his staff to create video presentations rather than PowerPoint. Um, and so we've got quite a lot of corporate clients like that. The other area we've moved into is advertising. So we've created a product called TouchAd, where these touch casts live inside a rich media ad unit. So if you're a brand, uh, and we're, we're about to go live with some major brands in Q4, later in Q4, and then in Q1. So if you're a brand, your consumer can transact with you inside video on a publisher site. And then when you're done tra transacting, you go back into the publisher site. I mean, I think this is, this is a great technology. It's well executed. I think, obviously, as the hardware gets better, a lot of people complain about Apple not making many innovations. But under the hood, as they improve their chipsets, it's only going to lend itself uh, more to power apps like this. So thanks for taking the time to talk to us. If you, need the if you need the links to the app and all the other bits and pieces that you need to know about this software, they're in the show notes on YouTube and on MediaTechSocial.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Raj Kotecha. Stay tuned and make sure you subscribe.